Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is another heat pump defrost control board. All right, this one's a little different, so I want to make sure we go over it, especially since it's missing the T2 terminal. All right, this one was out of a older carrier heat pump, and um, we're going to go ahead and start off here. So we're going to start off with our low voltage thermostat wires connections coming in. So there's a wiring harness here, and then you wire nut the thermostat wires onto the individual wires on the wiring harness. R is 24 volt power coming in and common is the path back. That's what powers the defrost control board. Y is 24 volts coming in powering the compressor. O is 24 volt power coming in to power the reversing valve and on this unit you're powering the reversing valve in cooling mode. All right, because this is a carrier Bryant pain unit, uh, not a rear ream. All right, uh, so you power uh, the reversing valve and cooling for the most part uh, in in most uh, residential like commercial units other than rear ream. So W2, that is a 24 volt signal wire coming back out, and that is actually uh, sending the 24 volts out to the indoor air handler. Uh, to tell the indoor air handler to turn electric resistance on or an auxiliary heat source. That happens during the defrost cycle only. All right? That's the only time that this is an output wire. Now we'll take a look at these other wires here. You have R and DFT. Those are the two wires that connect to the defrost temperature sensor. All right? so, so that defrost temperature sensor normally uh, closes at 30 degrees or lower and opens back up at about 80 degrees. All right, so, so that's sensing how cold the outdoor condenser fins are. Y is jumpered from here, from the source right here, Y, coming over to here and then it goes through the high pressure and temperature limit controls as well as any low, low pressure controls. All right, then it comes back in to T1. All right, once, once T1 has a signal of 24 volts and the control board knows that all of those pressure temperature safety switches are intact and they are closed. So you normally have a wire coming back from all of those pressure temperature limit switches to T1 and then you have a power coming off of T1 to the contactor. All right, they could also, those two wires could also meet on the contactor and then just provide 24 volts back to T1 over here. All right, but it starts here at Y, goes through the pressure temperature safety switches and ends up at the contactor and T1. If T2 is here, it will go from Y through the temperature, pressure temperature sensors to T1 and then the board would send 24 volts off from T2 to the contactor. All right, so that's why I wanted to go over this just to make sure you guys were aware of that. Um, and then you have O, that powers the reversing valve, and then it comes back to the common, all right? So that happens during cooling mode, all right, from these, from these two terminals here, and as well, it happens during defrost, because during defrost, you're actually running in cooling mode without the fan. All right, then up here, you have a settable timer for defrost. You have 30, 50, or 90 minutes. So you can select any of those times and that's a cumulative runtime. Uh, so that means that the heat pump could turn on and shut off five times for 10 minutes each time and that would meet the time requirement of 50 minutes. In order for this unit to go into defrost, you have to have met the time requirement and the DFT to R needs to be closed. All right, so uh, what you'd do if you wanted to say force defrost, what you'd do is you would take the wire off of DFT and R with the power off and then put alligator clips back on DFT and R and then turn the power back on, wait your five minutes for your five minute delay and then the unit's gonna turn on. After that, you can go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver and basically short right across these speed up terminals. When you short across these speed up terminals with a flathead screwdriver without any chrome paint on it, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to multiply the amount of time that you have the flathead screwdriver on there by 256. So the amount of time is going to be actually less than a minute compared to this 
50 minutes over here. So that's how you force it into defrost. Once you're satisfied after you've checked your defrost cycle, you can then pull the alligator clip off from DFT to R and that will open this electrical circuit and the control board will think that the outdoor fins are above 80 degrees. So that will get you back out of uh, defrost and back into heat mode. Uh, during defrost, what happens is the unit powers the reversing valve with O, finds its way back through the C, and so it's turning into cooling mode. And during cooling mode, if you, if you think about your, your outdoor fins are getting hotter than the outdoor air during the summertime. So if it's 90 degrees, those outdoor fins are getting hotter than that in order to reject heat outside. So during cooling now, it's actually going to get the fins nice and hot. All right, and, and W2 is going to uh, send a signal to the indoor air handler telling it to turn on the electric resistance. All right, so the electric resistance is also gonna dump heat into the refrigerant. The refrigerant's gonna absorb that, bring it back to the outdoor unit, and it's gonna help that outdoor, um, the outdoor fins reach a higher pressure, which means a higher temperature. One more thing happens during defrost, and you have OF1 coming from the contactor. You have power coming from the contactor. It's a 120 volt leg of the 240 volts. And then the relay can break that power as it comes off of OF2 and goes to the outdoor fan motor. So it stops the voltage going to the outdoor fan motor, at least one of the two legs. It stops that. And, and then the outdoor fins can get to a hotter temperature because it's not trying to reject heat into the outside air because that would be pretty easy. All right. And the fins would stay at a relatively low temperature and never melt that ice. So once again, the outdoor fan motor shuts off. W2 sends a signal to the indoor air handler telling electric resistance to turn on and you have your reversing valve located over here uh, powering the reversing valve and putting it into cooling mode once again because it's not a root and ring it's a it's a carrier which means uh, that uh, the reversing valve is not powered in heat mode and it is powered in cooling mode all right so that's basically it uh, I just wanted to make sure we we covered all those items hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC service tech channel